You hear that? That's the sound of someone getting wobbled in their favorite game. That's right, folks, it's time to ice climb. But before then, it's time to climb climb. Are you looking to hike your GSP all the way up to the Elite Smash bonus room? Well, then you should check out ProGuides.com. We've got character guides, guides from professionals, and professional guides, by which we mean live coaches. It's basically the condor that'll carry you to the next level. If you didn't understand any of those references, that's okay. It just means that you, like most people on the planet, never played an Ice Climbers game. Ice Climbers was one of those 80s Nintendo platformers that you'd only know about through A, Smash, B, a bonus game inside another game, or C, an arcade retrospective video that you initially watched because you were bored, but then it was weirdly interesting, so you watched another one, and now YouTube won't stop recommending you arcade retrospectives, and you can't stop watching them, and you wake up in a haze the next day to find that you ordered a fully operational balloon fight cabinet from eBay. Not speaking from personal experience. Anyways, the Ice Climbers games are mostly remakes, the most notable one adding in the pink Nana character. Their own games were unnecessarily hard to control, slippery, and weird. These character-defining attributes would go straight into the Ice Climbers design and melee. The Ice Climbers have super low traction, meaning they slide around, like in their games. But the true legacy of the arcade Ice Climbers was meaningful cooperative play, which means that they would be Smash's first puppet character. In fact, that was why they got in Melee. Sakurai wanted a unique character, and boy would Ice Climbers be unique. In terms of normals and aerials, the Ices are pretty standard, but once you get into the advanced parts of the game, they get weird. In Melee, this starts with traction. It's really notable in Melee because it makes their wave dash pretty long. This is both a blessing and a curse. The Ices move faster, but with less precision. But their main quirk isn't traction, it's desyncs. In Smash, the Ice Climbers start in a synchronized position. They perform the same move at roughly the same time, increasing damage and knockback. However, if you input the right thing at the right time, you can desynchronize the two, allowing each climber to do separate moves, which opens up a world of weird stuff. Naturally, when Melee first started getting competitive, players didn't know just how far desyncs could go, but it didn't take them too long to find some very practical applications of the desync. Chudat in particular pioneered the character. He found out reliable desync kill options like down throw up smash, and he'd be the first Ices player to get heavy percent off of a single grab. Chudat was the Ice Climber's main in the MLG days of Melee, and one of the best players in the world. He had a huge number of silver medals in the Ken era, often only losing to the King of Smash himself, and getting big wins on top 10 players like Azin. Chudat was a top 5 player from 2003 to 2009 and second best at several points along the way. So what exactly made Chudat so good? Well, if you believe the tier lists at the time, it wasn't the Ice Climbers. Since the beginning, they've been mid to high tier. They're a solid character with over-centralized strengths and weaknesses. In terms of strengths, the Ices have a great grab game even without wobbling. With wobbling, they have a literal zero to death off of a grab, and their ground game is potent because their hitboxes are surprisingly large and strong. But they're very weak in the air and offstage. The Ices have a bad horizontal mobility in the air, and that's a big deal. Aerial mobility is crucial to a character's advantage and disadvantage, and bad horizontal mobility means fewer follow-ups and more difficulty landing. Every Ices player also relies on Nana to win, and separating and killing Nana dismantles the character in every Smash title. This is pretty rough for Climber mains because it means they have to rely on poorly programmed AI at crucial points. Chudat succeeded by juicing the Climber's strengths and working around their weaknesses. For starters, Chudat optimized a lot of grab punishes, juggles, and tech chases. By 2007, he pioneered the grounded style many Climbers still have. Then, he identified ways he could work around those brutal weaknesses. The biggest is Solo Popo, or Sopo. Basically, the character you're stuck with after Nana dies. Chudat knew he'd end up Sopo at least two times a match, so he became the best Sopo in Melee, a title he still maintains today. Watch how Chudat loses Nana here and then proceeds to box with Mewtwo King's Marth and survive until 209%. 
Chunet does this by understanding what the other player wants to do to Sopo. He knows that he's been smacking around the other player, and now they think it's their turn to brutalize him. Chunat smartly waits for his opponents to overextend and punishes them. On top of all this, Chudat loves to troll. Chudat will not only use cheap tactics to win, he'll take pride in it. He did this well before wobbling. Watch as he sits in this little pocket of Corneria and smacks the crap out of PC Chris. That little pocket prevents Fox from using horizontal airspace to camp him out. Chudat will abuse it shamelessly for the entire game. Chudat would go on to be one of the few old school players to stay relevant to this day. Of course, Chudat isn't the only climber in Melee. In 2007, another Icy's main would win EVO Southern Qualifier Tournament. His name was Wobbles. And yes, Wobbling is named after him. Wobbles didn't discover Wobbling, it actually came from Japan, but Wobbles helped popularize it along with Chudat. Wobbles popularized it in order to destroy it. In the early days, he felt the technique was way too broken to be legal, and the majority of tournaments would ban it for a while. In the early meta, an easy to execute, boring, and widely loathed zero to death could have been disastrous. However, as the meta progressed and the gods arose, zero to deaths increasingly became a normal part of melee. It became clear that, even with wobbling, the climbers still weren't top tier. The climbers would struggle as top tier mains got better and better at separating the duo. No climber would get Chudat's consistent early success after 2010, including Chudat. However, the ICs were never irrelevant. Fly Amanita did well and became popular for his crazy technical handoff combos. With the ICs looking weakened, Wobbling would return to Melee in 2013 when it was legalized at EVO. And boy, was that good news for Wobbles. Wobbles went on a tear at EVO 2013, mounting one of the greatest upset runs and maybe the greatest ICs run ever. He'd get second place despite an insanely tough bracket. He beat Fiction, Lord, Shroomed, Mango, PPMD, and Hungrybox. Beating three of five gods is already impressive, but beating Hungrybox's Puff is an insane feat. Puff is an absolutely terrible matchup, and Hbox is great against the Climbers. EVO 2013 remains the closest any Icy's main has gotten to winning a Super Major. Chudat has gotten close with his fourth place finish at Shine 2019, and new Icy's mains like Bananas and Army have done well. But the Climbers struggle a lot against the top tiers who camp and separate them. Despite that, the Climbers have a big player base. There are so many notable Icy mains and so many notable upsets that if we listed them all, this video would go on longer than the actual Ice Climbers franchise. And it'd be even longer if we talked about the Wobbling Bands being discussed right now. If you want to learn more about that, then just enter Wobbling Band into your search bar and wave goodbye to the rest of your day. If you want to learn more about getting good, getting into Elite Smash, and getting past that tough matchup, then you should hit the subscribe button and open ProGuides.com in a new tab for when the video's done. In Brawl, the new climbers would start off in a roughly similar spot. They were perceived as a solid mid-tier at the start, but this was before players discovered the new Zero to Death grab. Brawl's chain grab took a bit more work to pull off consistently, but once players learned it, the characters shot up the tier lists. This chain grab was even better than in Melee, because most of the cast didn't have insane punishes to match. Brawl's shield mechanics also made it much easier to land safe grabs. Brawl had a shield sliding and power shielding mechanic that made it very easy for ice climbers to slide forward, power shield to avoid shield stun, then get an easy grab. Blizzard and Ice Shot also led to a grab, and even Sopo down throws led into each other, allowing Sopo to chain grab long enough for Nana to get back and set up the infinite. These frosty little devils were even more polarized in style too. They were still pretty edge guardable, and Sopo may have been worse in Brawl than in Melee, especially against Meta Knight. However, the chain grab was harder to execute than the wobble and more prone to drops. Even still, Icy's were about as defining a feature to Brawl's late game as Meta Knight was. Many grand finals were Ice Climbers versus Meta Knight. These matches were incredibly swingy, with one mistake from the Icy resulting in Nana's death and Popo's total invalidation, and one mistake from Meta Knight resulting in the chain grab. Ice Climbers became the next popular character after Meta Knight. They could cover most matchups in the game, and they weren't that hard to pick up. Many of the great Icy mains in the US, like Nakat and Vinny, switched over from other characters. Japan's 9B was the original Ice Climber main. 
He optimized the chain grabbing further, making it faster and harder to mash out of, and he optimized edge guard punishes too. These optimizations led to insane results in 2014, beating the best players in the world, dominating Japan's tournaments, and tying for first place in the global rankings. Brawl would be the summit for these two. They'd collect their weird eggplants with eyes and fall straight off the mountain. The 3DS didn't have the technical capacity to handle the duo, getting them cut from Smash 4 entirely. In Ultimate, the Ices would return, but as a fascinating mid to high tier character, not an oppressive top tier or controversial walking infinite combo. In the early days, a good portion of the community felt Ice Climbers would one day be top tier. The argument went that, like in Brawl, they'd take a stock off a grab when fully optimized. The ICs do have some incredibly potent desync tools, which you'll see if you've ever watched a Danish butter cookie montage. And yet, the ICs will still probably not reach those old Brawl heights. And if that upsets you for some reason, I will find you. The issue isn't so much a lack of a wobble or the difficulty of desyncs, the issue is Ultimate's engine. For starters, Ultimate nerfed grab, especially shield grab, so ICs have to work a lot harder to get grabs than in Brawl. The ICs also don't have a crazy long wave dash anymore, meaning their ground mobility is solid but not exceptional. Nana's AI can be brutal too. I mean, <laughs> look at this. Yeesh. Nintendo's changes to the climbers have also been a bit of a mixed bag. Improving AI, but making desyncs tougher and eliminating some really potent desync combos. Then you got their mediocre horizontal air mobility, something that still hurts every part of their game. Characters like ZSS, Joker, and Lucina can camp them in neutral and hound them in disadvantage. Their hitboxes also aren't as good in Ultimate because the roster is full of range and disjoints. And they don't have any guaranteed ways to beat the many prominent projectile-based zoners in the meta either. Their overall meta position is pretty mediocre, and please, don't take our word for it, take a look at Big D's matchup chart. He's the best Ices main in the world, and the only Ices main on the PGRU. There are a lot of pluses and minuses. But now that we're talking about Big D, we gotta talk about why, despite the meta, the climbers aren't bad. First, there's damage. For whatever reason, the Children of the Ice hit like a semi-truck. Simple two-hit combos can rack up a lot of percent, as can raw hits in neutral. Then there are the actual grab combos. Their frame data isn't bad either. They have three pretty fast aerials and some quick and strong smash attacks. And they've got good kill options and good hitboxes. Their neutral and side special are great at controlling space. In particular, the side special is bizarrely hard to punish if spaced and used right. They get walled out by zoners and sorties, but they do well against brawly close quarters characters like Mario, to the point that Big D has 3-0'd Dark Wizzy. This is why the climbers feel mid or high tier to most. Whatever tier you put them in, Ultimate's Ice Climbers are probably the coolest and most dynamic the duo has ever been. If you haven't watched a Big D set recently, online or offline, you should. This character is so interesting and creates so many unique exchanges based off of desyncs. At the same time, there's no one desync combo to rule them, so you get a lot of variety too. Ultimate Ices probably won't ever be as strong as in Brawl, nor as popular in Melee, but they still have a solid player base that's pushing their meta and getting solid results and upsets. Big D transferred over from King DDD to the Ice Climbers. Player Unknown co mains them with Mewtwo. Key in Japan has added them to his roster. Ultimate may be Nintendo's best crack at the character. They're not overpowered, but not weak. And they're really fun to watch and play, so long as you're devoted to really learning them. And as always, if you're devoted to learn more about Smash, be sure to check out ProGuides.com and subscribe for more Smash lore.